So it seems as if the wedge between the right and Joe Rogan is continuing to grow, presumably because he actually had a right wing guest on his program. Not surprising there. But what was surprising was that he pushed back against what this guest was saying, and it pertains to the issue of abortion, which Rogan has made very clear. He supports abortion, so good for him. So I'll give him credit for pushing back finally on something that a right-winger he brings on his show says, but I don't necessarily care that much about Rogan. Like, I don't want to try to gauge where he's at ideologically and whether or not he sides with Republicans or Democrats. I'll give him credit where it's due, but ultimately, I wanted to talk about this particular clip because of the arguments raised by said guest, because they're so mind-numbingly idiotic that I, I can't not respond to them. Now, the guest that I'm referring to here is Seth Dillon, CEO of the Babylon Bee. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the Babylon Bee, they're kind of like The Onion, wherein they're a satirical news website. The difference is that they're not funny, and they've never been funny. For example, here's a couple of bangers. Pete Davidson confirmed as next James Bond. Hilarious stuff here, guys. Here are the winners of the Babylon Bee's Women of the Year. And they have The Rock and Colin Kaepernick and Spongebob. Get it? LOL. Because trans women exist. So, <laughs> this is great. Report. Go to church, you heathen. Ooh, this one's really edgy. AOC to vote against making daylight savings time permanent, saying Americans consume too much sunlight already. Okay. Now, I kid you not, this was under their greatest hits section on their website. Quote, Bernie Sanders arrives in Hong Kong to lecture protesters on how good they have it under communism. <laughs> so fucking hilarious. Just bangers. So Seth Dillon is going to talk to Joe Rogan about abortion, and Joe Rogan is going to push back specifically because of what Seth Dillon says and how egregious it is. Let's watch. There's also women who have been raped who should not have to fucking carry some rapist baby there's women who have been sexually assaulted before the age of 14. there's also hold on though but hold on there's don't also, stop me okay you that's real too there's and we all have to agree we have to agree on both of those things there are also though i'm not i'm, I'm not going to argue with you on that point but i will say there are people who have been born of rape and are alive right now and are pro-life and they go around speaking talking That's about how great. I had a right to live and they, and they will go out there and make an argument a pro-life case and they're a rape they're the, a born of a rape you don't have a right to tell a 14 year old girl she has to carry a rapist baby I'm you just saying just that I'm but just saying that's real too saying? yeah I understand what, I understand you, what you're you saying understand with, what I'm saying like you don't have the right to tell my 14 year old daughter she has to carry her rapist baby you yeah, understand to that? look that woman in the eye who's who was the but born listen, of a rape do you understand that that's a 14 year old child if you a 14 year old child gets raped you say that they have to carry that baby i don't think two wrongs make a right i don't think that's murder, not, I, don't I don't think, think murder is an answer to i don't think murder fixes a rape so what he did there was tacitly endorse violence against women he said i don't think that a murder fixes a rape so murder being the worst crime the implication is that the girl in this hypothetical situation who was raped is more evil than the rapist for choosing to have an abortion that's the implication that's the subtext. And it's so gross. Imagine arguing to an audience of 11 million that a child who is the victim of rape should not have the choice to get rid of the rapist baby. And again, I just want to remind everyone, most of the abortions that are performed in the United States, they happen very early in the stage of pregnancy. So we're talking about zygotes. We're talking about clumps of cells. And he's saying, no, no, no. To have an abortion, that's worse than the act of rape itself. That's the implication, at least. And that's sick. I, 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 can't even, I, I can't even respond to that without just vocalizing my disgust. You, you're a gross person if you actually think that women should be forced, and girls should be forced, to have their rapist's baby. And look, this is part of the evangelical ethos. When I was a young child, I was indoctrinated into religion, and I specifically remember this woman who came to speak at our church, and she talks about how she was the survivor of abortion because her mom was raped when she was 13 years old, and her mother could have had an abortion, but she did not. And when I was younger, that really resonated with me because I thought, oh, wow, you know, it's so glad that she's here. But as I grew older and I, I thought back about that story that she told, I realized how absurd it was inherently so because it's not like you were watching. Like, it's not like, you know, 
any of us choose to be here. It's not like we're floating on clouds and we're watching, you know, uh, our parents and we're just saying, oh my God, please save me. Please, please save me. Or, you know, you're, you're crossing your fingers, hoping that your parents breed so you can exist. You weren't around. So how is that traumatizing to you? I mean, your mom should have had the choice and she did have the choice. She had the choice to have you despite the rape at that very young age. But what these people want to do is take away the choice so that way every single woman and girl who is raped is forced to have their rapist baby. And that's just so morally reprehensible that these people should never be taken seriously. I mean, sure, what if, you know, that person who's here today who's the product of rape was aborted? Nobody would be sad that they weren't here because we wouldn't know about their existence because they wouldn't exist. Like, if my parents chose to not have me then I couldn't be mad at them because I wouldn't exist. I wouldn't have the capacity to be mad. Like, we're dealing in really weird what-if hypotheticals. I could say the same thing. Well, like, I might have not existed today if my mom had an abortion. Was she considering it? I don't think so, at least. If she did, would I care today? No, because I'm here, and that's all that matters. Maybe we should take care of people that are here currently, that exist right now. But imagine, like, thinking that you're some sort of a victim because— you were this close to not existing. Like maybe your dad chose to come inside of a mouth or an asshole, you know, instead of uh, conceiving you. I mean, look, are we supposed to feel sadness for all of the sperm that is disposed of on a tissue? Those are all potential lives. I mean, what if that could have been a life? What if there's people here today that could have been on tissue and never could have been born? What this all comes down to is them trying to find some way to justify forcing girls to give birth to their rapist babies. And that is absolutely detestable. These people are sick. And to justify it by playing the what-if game is really sick and twisted. The point is that we give women and girls the choice to do with their body what they want and not say, actually, you don't get to have an abortion because that's murder. You would honestly say that to the victim of a rape? What is wrong with you? And again, you'll find people who will say, look, I, my, my mom was raped and I'm here because of the rape. And sometimes they'll use that to justify their pro-life position. But other people on the opposite side can do the same thing. Look, I'm glad that my mom ha had that choice. I'm glad that she chose to have me. But ultimately, I'm glad that women have this choice because of how traumatic rape is. It ruins lives. It's no small thing. And perhaps it's difficult for men, men to grapple with how horrifying rape is, even though men, you know, are victims of rape as well. But like in this instance, when we're talking about, you know, pregnancy being a consequence of rape, perhaps they can grapple with how traumatic that is. But it's just, it's really sickening. And not to mention, like when they're talking about a 14-year-old there, having a baby could kill a 14-year-old. But again, it's like these people time after time, when given the choice between the woman's life or the girl's life and the fetus, nine times out of ten, ten times out of ten, they side with the fetus because that is more important because what if? It's so weird. Like, I would like to ask Seth Dillon, and perhaps Joe Rogan asked this question, do you ever feel guilty when you splooge onto a tissue and think, wow, that could have been my son? Had I splooged in the correct place, that could have become a human being someday like do you ever feel guilty yourself or is it just women who have to bear all of the burden of what could have been or who could have existed or who couldn't have existed do they ever turn this around and think man i just killed millions of sperm by jacking off it was like five minutes and i just committed a genocide do they ever have this thought like i just want to know what goes through the heads of these folks because it's so bizarre to me the way that they think so yeah that's Seth Dillon, CEO of the Babylon Bee. And you wonder why, you know, they're so funny over there because, yeah, that's the mentality. 14-year-olds should be forced to carry their rapist's baby. Sick, twisted, but completely expected. Do yourself a favor and click the join button on YouTube to become a member. Because Mike's doing a great job getting to watch his videos before everyone else is tremendous. Many people are saying this. Join today, folks. You won't regret it.